to be continuing with managing quality and this is the course outline the updated course outline that talks about what things that we have to cover in the following subject okay so moving on to the theories and unit 1.1 over here we have to understand the approaches uh, to quality management in organizations so we're going to be evaluating a few theories and we're going to be discussing them so the first theory is Deming by Deming this was a scholar whose name was William Edwards Deming and he helped to rebuild Japan's infrastructure after the World War II and he is also known as the father of quality management so the subject that we're studying it's quality management and this person is very famous and he is known as the father of quality management so basically this happened during the 1950s so what Deming did was he proposed that business processes should be placed in a continuous feedback loop so managers can identify and they can change the parts that need improvement to do this he created a diagram to illustrate the constant process commonly known as the PDCA cycle we discussed this in the previous lecture as well I'm going to show you the diagram discussing the PDCA cycle P stands for plan D stands for do C for check and A for act so he says that first you have to plan then you have to check then you have to uh, sorry do then you have to check and then you have to act so this is uh, how he designed the business processes so the results could be improved okay so the uh, this is a uh, very effective and this is used by many organizations so uh, what are they basically doing they're going to be uh, you know planning everything that what they have to produce or maybe what they have to what are the processes then they'll start doing it and then they'll check it they'll evaluate it and if there are any problems uh, that might occur and then they will act upon that they will rectify that problem and then they will start again with the planning and doing and everything so this is the uh, basic uh, theory that was given by Deming okay so then we have the other person that is Juran so the key steps in Juran's theory on quality are uh, quality planning quality control and quality improvement this is also that we have studied in the previous slides as well so to implement a company wide quality management process you have to identify your customers you have to find out their needs their wants and how to work towards those needs you create measures of quality and you organize them to meet those measures consistently and you need to create processes that work in real life conditions so Durant's theory on qual quality management tells us that top level management should be sincere in its efforts to commit to quality or else all the efforts such as uh, you know uh, such as these would not work so let's now have a look at a YouTube video. He talked about the same things that we talked about quality planning that the first step is that there is quality planning. Then we have quality control and then at the end we have quality improvement. So these are the three steps that are a part of Durant's theory.
so they have control and quality improvement okay then moving on to the next theory that is by Fingim Bon. So this was an American quality control expert and he was also a businessman who coined the term total quality control and he mainly believed that quality should be managed as a part of the overall business strategy. So as we can see that all of these people that we are discussing, all of them proposed that sh there should be total quality control. There should be continuous feedback. There should be TQM, total quality management that we have studied in the previous slides. They say that he is also very famous for the concept of hidden plant, which showed that how much capacity is lost due to mistakes make made during the production. So obviously, uh, like he talked about the person in the video talked about that if there is a fire and they have to rectify that problem so they're going to through this theory they're going to find out that okay because of the fire how much did we lose like how much capacity did we lose uh, you know um, how much loss did we have to face this principle this approach also has three approaches the first one is quality leadership so over here uh, we could say that the management should take the lead and it should be based on a sound planning like the same thing that we discussed in the Deming uh, theory about the cycle the PDCA cycle so over here they also talked about that there should be good leadership then the second point is quality technology okay so they say that uh, this not only means applying the statistical data and like other tools and engineering methods but it also means that the company that the managers they should adapt to the latest quality management programs in order to satisfy the customers so we have to as a manager as an organization we have to stay updated we have to you know um, go with the flow that if there are any improvements any updates in the technology then we should uh, you know uh, um, adopt those as well we can't just be like that okay uh, you know we we had set up this uh, our business in the 1980s and we're going to uh, you know uh, have the same we're going to follow the same processes and same everything so what we have to do we have to rectify ourselves we have to update ourselves and we have to adapt to the changing environments then we have organizational commitment so all the members of the organization like including the office staff the engineers the shop floor workers everyone they have a significant role in improving the business quality you have to like motivate them continuously and you have to train them continuously and when you train them when you motivate them this shows that they are committed to the organization and that way they would want that the quality of the organization the services of the organization improves so every person is important and every person plays a part in the organizational commitment. Then we have another theory that is by Crossby. So this is a zero uh, defect theory that uh, we uh, discussed a little bit about in the last slides. So zero defect is a way of thinking and doing things uh, you know that that means that uh, you try to get everything right in the first time so the idea here is that you have a philosophy of zero defects you can increase your profits by eliminating the cost of failure so whatever you're doing even in your planning and everything you have to be so careful that you 
don't make any faults or any mistakes that way it's going to save you a lot of cost a lot of time and a lot of resources so crossbias position was that where that there are zero defects there are no cost associated with the issues of poor quality and as a result quality becomes uh, free so he's saying that if you get it right in the first time then we will have to face no costs then we have the last approach that is ishikawa so this is like a a uh, fish bone diagram it is also known as the fish bone diagram as well and what happens that it is also known as a cause and effect diagram so it is a uh, it is a easy way to visualize the cause and it is it resembles a fish skeleton where i am going to show you a video as well and uh it is useful for product development if there are any problems you know troubleshooting processes if you want to identify the root cause of a problem you can use this and it will help you to rectify that problem so uh, let's watch the video then you guys are going to understand it better this was the this was the ishikawa a uh, diagram which helps the organizations to know that how they have to proceed further and how they have to identify their problems and after that how they have to you know um rectify those problems so because of this we find the root causes okay moving on to 1.2 compare the effectiveness of approaches to quality management used by different organizations so here are the few things that we're going to be discussing so the first one is quality planning so it's basically it's not uh you know not not enough to make sure you get a project done on time and under budget basically you need to make sure that you have the right product to suit your stakeholders needs so quality means making sure that you have to build what you said you would build and you do it as efficiently as possible without making any mistakes or without having errors and that means that you trying not to make too many mistakes like we discussed and you always uh try to keep your project working towards the goal so you try to make updates in it you try to improve it continuously then we have quality control this is a process uh through which a business seeks to ensure that the product quality is maintained or improved so quality control requires the company to create an environment where management and the employees they strive for perfection so this is done by uh, training your staff training your personnel you could uh, create benchmark for quality for your product quality you can tell them that okay this this is how uh, a good product should look like and then you could also test your products to check their uh significance and if there are any variations in uh, in them you can check that as well so you know you could like uh change your products and you could uh add a little bit of verification or variations in them and you can then test them that which one which one works best for you then we have continuous quality improvement tqm so continuous improvement Uh, basically we all know that it is an ongoing effort to improve all the elements of an organization like the processes the tools the products the services everything you have to improve everything simultaneously sometimes those improvements are big and sometimes they are small but what's most important is that they are frequent so companies that excel at continuous improvement start with the belief that success would come from innovating like how how they do what they do or maybe by engaging all the employees in sharing the information or maybe 
exploring better ways to deliver to customers and to respond to the ongoing changes in the external environment. Then we have self-assessment. So self-assessment is a process of evaluating your own organization against a model for continuous improvement. So by doing this, it is possible to understand both achievements and improvement opportunities. The objective of self-assessment is to identify and act on the areas of improvement processes that require additional effort. So while you're recognizing and maintaining, then what you have to do, you're having a self-assessment of what you're doing. And, uh, you know, in easy words, you could say that you are uh, comparing yourself from the uh, previous version of yourself. Then we have communication channels. So communication is central to all the meaningful collaboration and teamwork. Communication keeps a whole organization moving. There are different ways we can communicate, such as written communication, verbal communication, nonverbal communication, and visual communication. So it is important that whatever type of communication we choose, the information needs to be conveyed effectively. Various modes or uh, mediums can be used to transmit and receive the information is referred to as communication channels. Then we have macro issues of theory and perception. So TQM implementation theory with uh, we have Western analysis in order to identify the critical factors of successful implementation of TQM tools, especially in times of an unstable macro environment. Like, for example, uh, we had COVID. So finding out that an important area that needs attention is the attributes of the external environment where the organization approach uh, operates. So basically, uh, you have a pestle analysis which helps you. So um, pestle uh, means P for political, E for economic, S for social, T for technological, E for uh you know, economical and L for legal. So uh, we're going to be discussing them as well further as well, a few of these factors. So these are the macro issues which uh, come in an organization and they have to take care of these things while they are maintaining their quality. Okay. 1.3, discuss the need for continuous improvement in an organization. So like, why do we need it? We, do, we can see that we have to ensure the customer needs and wants and aspirations are met. So meaning that they have to be satisfied. Then we have identification of quality gaps. Okay, so uh, maybe there is a company that is not producing so well. So uh, you could, you know, identify that gap and you can fill it. You know, before anyone else, before any of your competitor does that, you do that. And then you get a competitive advantage. Then we have uh, contrasting needs of internal and external customers. So uh, through this link, we're going to understand what are internal and external customers. So let me open the link. Okay, what is an internal customer and an external customer? So they say if you are its sole owner, your company has many stakeholders. The people who buy your products and services are invested in the pleasure and utility of these products. Okay, so external customers are those who see your company mainly as a provider of something they buy and internal customers participate in your business by actually being a part of it. So it means that, for example, we have an uh, we have a supplier so that is our internal customer and if even we are buying from anyone we will be an internal customer of that person and for external it would be our customers our basic customers who we want the end pro uh, the end product to reach so valuing external customers without external customers your company would have no revenue and no reason for being in business you design products and services with the goal of pleasing these customers and meeting their needs. Your opinions via formal service and informal conversations and you may adopt the customer service at the edge. The customer is always right. 
when your external customers have negative experiences with your business, they may spread unflattering comments via online form um, uh, word to mouth. When they make uh, positive experiences with your staff and your products, they'll give you a uh, give you a repeat business. Okay. Then valuing internal customers. The workplace experience your business gives your workers should be satisfying as well or else they'll have no reason to work for you other than the fact that you sign their paychecks. So what we're doing that obviously we're paying them for everything, but we have to value them as well. We have to motivate them. We have to train them. We have to give them bonuses, commissions and everything. When your business meets employee needs, the employees come to work with a positive attitude and the intention of doing a good job. If you treat your employees badly, your workplace environment will become toxic. Your employees will perform as well as necessary to keep their jobs, but they are unlikely to go the extra mile to do creative work and come through for you in crisis. So internal customers and the external customer experience. Your employees are the face of your company. The license your customers interact with, license means your managers, interact with when, uh, when they research products and make purchases. Satisfied employees represent your company with integrity and enthusiasm. The internal customer experience translates to a positive attitude towards external customers. Customers who see a friendly and engaged staff are more likely to support your business and customers who hear your employees complaining behind your back. So obviously, uh, when people are working, for example, if I want to uh, buy something, so, uh, you know, uh, maybe people in my friend circle or my friends or someone from my family could be working in the, that organization. And if they say that, no, the company isn't good, the products aren't good, uh, you know, um, the behavior with the, the staff isn't good. So obviously, I'm also going to despise that company and not going to buy from that. So if the internal customers are happy, then uh, your external customers will be happy as well. So workers who care to do better work than employees who only want to collect their paychecks and leave. They manufacture products of higher quality and put extra effort into problem solving, thereby improving the experience of your external customers. External inspections. So uh, what we're going to be doing here that we have to uh, check the quality of the product. So for example, if we are uh, you know, importing raw material from somewhere, then we have to check it from the suppliers they have to check our uh, products as well and our raw material as well and when uh, it is shipped to us then we also have to check that as well also you can even have third party uh, logistics checking your uh, quality of the product then we have organizational need for example business development bottom line updating so uh, you we can understand uh, the uh, business development and updating, but for bottom line it means that specifically the bottom line uh, bottom line is a company's income after all the expenses have been deducted from the revenues. So at the end we are left with the uh, company income, the company profit, the retained earnings. So that is known as the bottom line. So these are the organizational needs. We obviously need development. We obviously need income. And we also need to be updated with our external environment. Okay. Then we have evaluate the impact of external factors on quality management in organizations. So basically... Uh, you need to understand that the external factors are equally important for the stability and profitability of your company. Though you cannot control such factors or change them, you can establish a flexible environment to manage the unforeseen marketing uh, market challenges. Such a proactive approach could mean that a world uh, uh, could mean a world of a difference 
from your organization's productivity for your organization's productivity so for example uh, if the government introduces a new taxation scheme every company will have to uh, will need competent staff new procedures and make some changes to existing processes the slow response to the scheme could mean that a lot of challenges in the change management and potential penalties from the government for the respective delays so you know there could be so many problems that could be occurred and what you have to do that you are uh, as a organization are supposed to have the uh, flexible environment because obviously you cannot control what is happening on the outside so the first is policy regulations legal requirements uh, technology cost uh, slash access to appropriate technology so uh, like we discussed uh, the pested analysis so like if we talk about the political factors so these could include the government actions or approaches that can influence the economy like um, it could be the political uh, instability in a country or an economy the government policies the public uh, investments your tax policies your local infrastructure and so many things so these all come under political factors then we could talk about the economic factors as well that could also come as a part of policy regulation as well uh, that could mean uh, you know um, like the uh, ratio of uh, change in demand and supply and they might directly impact the organization organization effectiveness and the efficiency so the economic factors include things like inflation uh the change in exchange rate uh the economic growth and decline and uh, the interest rates that are in the banks so these are so many things that could be you know uh, that could impact and uh, you know these could also come into a, a legal requirements as well that uh, what are the laws and regulations that are taken place in that specific uh, country or economy then we have technological factors so it also includes the impact of technological advancements and innovations uh, that are in uh, that are evolving in the market so uh, we could see that uh, in the in the short run uh, if we uh, you know opt for high technology updated technology it could be, be very expensive but in the long run it would be very beneficial and the cost of production would would be lowered so uh, and with the help of technology uh, th there could be uh, numerous examples that for example uh, you could have csr initiatives like the corporate social responsibility obviously you're also um, you know um, responsible for the environment as well so you have to uh, reduce the carbon footprint uh, you know um, recycle your waste and so on so all of these things so basically every external factor is responsible to bring some change for the entire organization and all the changes need to be managed effectively and efficiently to transform the unfavorable conditions into improvement opportunities okay then we have unit number two that is to investigate the importance of quality control and quality assurance systems to organization so like uh, quality systems uh, are is the first one so we know that uh, you know um, quality uh, management systems they help businesses assess and uh, maintain the quality of produced goods and uh, customer experiences it is used to define and implement the quality specifications based on customer requirements in conformance with industry standards and regulations so this is the same thing that we discussed in the uh, the slides that we did previously that we have to conform to the industry standards we have to uh, conform to the uh, standards that are made by the government or by the uh, legal authority and in that we in the previous slides we also discussed about iso you know 9000 and 9001 and so on so these are what basically quality systems are 
then we have mass production and mass inspection so mass production as you can understand by the name is the manufacturing of large quantities of standardized products often using assembly lines or automation technology so for example if you want to make a coke or pepsi so but uh, if you guys have ever seen the factories on the the tv or uh, youtube you can see that uh, it is a, you know a standard product and uh, it is like a conveyor belt is there and uh, the bottles are being filled and so on. So what is happening that it is the same product. So we don't need any variations in it. So uh, it is a fast process and it is continuously going on. Then we have a mass inspection. So how we can do this that we could uh, have different batches. And for example, we could check one of the batches like uh, is it done? Is it not? Like, for example, um, you know, uh, for example, you could have like stages of it, like pre-production inspection. You can have pre-production inspection, like about the raw materials. You can like check a batch. Then during production inspection, then uh, when it is being made, you can check a batch. Then pre-shipment inspection, like we discussed in the previous slide, that we need to have external inspections like over here so you can do that as well and then we have um, uh, pre um, uh, container loading and unloading inspection so obviously uh, when you're uh, loading the products you're sending them to somewhere so obviously uh, sometimes what happens that the bottles of the pepsi or coke they might break or something like that or they might be like too much filled with gas and they can explode. So uh, you can check for every product that you are sending on its way. Then we have quality systems for goods versus quality system for services. The so quality systems for goods and services, obviously for a good, you need to uh, check its production. And for the service, when you're uh, giving a service, then you have to uh you know um satisfy the customer with your service like for example if you're a doctor so you have to give a good uh, you know a, a, a good surgery or a good operation or good medicines or like you know you have to uh, diagnose them properly or if you're going to a therapist and that person is giving you a service as well so if he or she does his or her job well then we can see that how and they are uh, performing and is their quality good or not then we have quality accreditation for example bs 5750 uh, so basically uh, this one is the british standard on uh, quality system so it is uh, you know um, uh, also equivalent to european standards so uh, BS5750 and EN29000. These are the same things. Uh, only this one is in British and this one is European. So both means quality systems. So this points out that the standards should be laid down in an organization and that you as an organization should have formalized procedures and you are also uh you know uh supposed to have uh, you are also supposed to have documentation and you have to ensure quality assurance so this is also like a, a standard iso standards that we have studied in the previous slide then over here we have iso 9002 which uh refers to that the company level certification uh should be published so the company has to publish its certification on its product or on its uh, service provision. For example, if you're a doctor, you could like, uh, you know, have uh, have it uh, under, could write it over there, ISO 9002. So people will know that, okay, uh, he is, uh, you know, having a proper um, a standard, uh, you know, from a ISO and it means that he will assure quality. Normally, this is done for goods, uh, like, for example, if you're doing any production. 
for example, for making cakes in a factory. Then we have charter mark. So a charter mark is a government's national standard for customer service for organizations delivering public services. So it is like a, um, you know, uh, uh, there's like a proper criteria that you have to consider that like, what are your standards? How will you consult your customers? Whether uh, whatever you offer, is it accessible or not? Your service to the customers, uh, whether you are continuously improving your products or not, and whether you contribute to the wider community that if you're doing CSR or not. Then we have citizens charter. So this is also a document of commitments that is made by a government, uh, by a government organization to the citizens or the client groups in respect of the services uh, that are being provided to them or to um, the other customers. So like it is a formal document which shows that, okay, we are going to provide you with the best quality. Then we have investors in people uh, it is also a standard for people's management and it offers accreditation to organizations that adhere to the investors and people standard like um, you know um, it was owned by the uh, UK government and they said that the society's capacity to invest in people to ensure they become functional productive, productive members of the society so basically what that if we are providing uh, our community with jobs, are we paying them properly? Are we doing CSR? Are we contributing towards the society? And are we contributing towards the people that are living in our community? Then we have differentiate between quality control and quality assurance. So over here we could see uh, quality assurance. These are a few pointers related to that so the first one is proactive managerial tool so proactive quality management means that uh, you are prepared for the unexpected with a plan in place you can deal with any contingencies that may arrive so uh, the uh, organizations that thrived in covid they had uh, you know contingency plans they had a backup plan so they were proactive organizations in virtually any context avoiding a problem in the first place is more affecting than fixing a mistake so what you should do when you're uh, uh, doing a business or if you're a manager you should try to have uh, contingency plans you should try to have plan b's so whenever a problem occurs you are you know ahead of that problem then we have responsibility of the whole workforce. So quality assurance managers ensure that a company's products and services meet predefined acceptability thresholds. So they plan, they coordinate, and they implement the quality assurance programs and policies to improve the organization's efficiency, reduce the waste, and improve profitability. Then we have process oriented. So quality assurance is process oriented. Like it focuses on preventing quality issues. Quality assurance helps in preventing defects by ensuring that processes used to manage create deliverable works. Not only does it work, but it is consistently followed by the team. So what we're seeing here that the whole organization, everybody, they all have to assure that the quality is good. It, it um, like the manager till the last employee. Then we have focus on prevention. So like we discussed in zero defects that you have to prevent the defect before it comes. So Quality assurance ensures that all the techniques, all the approaches, all the methods, all the processes, all are designed for the projects are and are implemented correctly. Then occurs before during processes. So quality assurance begins very early and continues throughout the life cycle of the project. So 
continuous improvement is happening. TQM is happening. So since this process uses some of the outputs of the plan quality processes, it is not performed until after plan quality is performed. So quality audit is key tool to use in this process. So you have to audit the quality like we audit in banks and in organizations that what is going on, we also have to audit the quality as well. Okay, then we have quality control. So we have the reactive and corrective tool. So over here, quality control is a reactive process. Like the quality assurance was proactive and quality control is reactive. That whatever has been done after that, what you're going to do. So it focuses on effectively identifying the defects in the completed products before they can be shipped to customers. So in quality assurance, you're, uh, you know, identifying the problems, defects before production. And over here in quality control, you are identifying the products after production. Then we have product oriented. Quality assurance was process oriented and quality control is product oriented. So, it focuses on identifying quality issues in manufactured products that could affect customer satisfaction. Another way to understand this is distinction in action versus results. So quality, uh, you know, quality assurance involves the actions which can create the product and quality control is focused on the resulting product like we discussed in the first point. Then it focuses on identification and correction of components or products that fall below standards. So obviously, if you are if you made the product and it, that product isn't up to the mark, then you have to identify that why isn't it up to the mark. And carried out to ensure products with the specification function correctly are free of defects. So this is why we do it that for further production, we don't make the same mistake. Then we have 2.2, discuss how specific organization uses quality control systems. So these are the quality management systems, Six Sigma, Zero Defects, TQM, International Quality Standards, and Benchmarking. So for all of these, I have, uh, uh, you know, have these YouTube videos. So we're going to be watching one by one. Okay, so now the first video we're going to see is about Six Sigma.